Hey there, my name is Chuck Black and welcome to my studio. So today I'm going to be painting an autumn landscape with some blue mountains in the background and a colorful sky. And we're going to be using Golden Flute Acrylics and Liquitex Soft Body Acrylics. So if you'd like to join us, welcome. And remember, if you haven't already, you can sign up for a chance at winning one of my free hand signed art prints by clicking this card here for more info. All right, let's get started on the painting. All right, so we have a wide range of colors today. We're going to be using titanium white, carbon black, Prussian blue, cerulean blue, primary yellow, this one's sap green, quinacridone red, and then the two Liquitex colors that I'm using are cad orange and yellow orange. All right, so I'm going to get some water on my brush. I'm going to tap it on my palette. And I'm going to grab some cerulean blue and some white. Get a lot of water on there. I want to sketch out what we're going to have. So I want a tree line that comes down through here. And another one comes up through here. Of course, our mountain We're going to have something going on in the mountain over here. Just trying to stay creative. Think of things I could be adding. We'll stick with something like that. I don't know if I'm going to stick with, with this, but this will just get us started. And then we're going to have our stream down below. And rub that part away. So we got an idea, I got a mess going here, but we have an idea of a stream. It's gonna be kind of winding through here like that. And the trees are gonna be over in here and something right through here. Let's stick with this for right now. And I'm gonna grab a larger brush. This is a flat brush, filbert actually, number six. We're gonna get some water I'm going to start with some white, get a whole bunch of white. Just get it on the canvas. Just over on this side, we don't want any on this side. So our light source is over here. Laying down this coat of white is going to help us get started here. All right, so we got some white. I'm going to pick up some primary yellow. Just get some set up there. We're going to take some quinacridone. this time. A little more white. I'm going to 
dip my brush in water, grab some more white. I'm going to add some cerulean blue to this mix. That's going to give us a little bit of a violet. Yeah, I'm just kind of starting slow. I want things to come out pretty close this first go around. So I'm just playing with it. I could go a little bit faster, but just kind of seeing what I like, what I don't like. It can be a slow start with anything, but I can usually speed things up once I get a good idea of what I like. Get some more cerulean blue. Just we're gonna keep going across the top. I think I'll end up filling in most of this area with the blue. And we'll grab a little more white. You see how the sketch we made underneath becomes very unimportant as we can just cover that up, we can change it how we want. I'm just gonna blend this area a little bit, just transition between the blues and pinks with my finger just to get that blend a little bit closer. Okay. I'm gonna leave the sky for right now. I'm gonna wash that brush really well. And I'm going to grab some white. I'm going to take that white, get it on pretty thick. have snow on our mountains we want that white to be pretty bright we're gonna have to go over it again as probably won't cover it the way we want it to right away first go around mix it with that blue a little bit Kind of helps us along. And then we're going to want to take, probably mix some blue with our white here. I'm going to go ahead and fill that part in. Probably fill this part in as well with that same color blue. Looks a lot lighter over on this side. Okay. And wash that brush. Now I'm going to switch to my round blender. This one's by Princeton. Artist Loft makes a, a roundish blender like this called a scumbling brush. I'm going to stick with this and I'm going to get some water in my fingers and just kind of tap it on my palette, just pick up a little bit. We don't want too much water on our brush. And we're gonna have some trees that come down into the shadows through here. So let's grab some white and let's start with a little bit of quinacridone. bit of pink and then we'll go have a little more water like we did a little more water and I'm just gonna go right into our light blue that we have here still and I gotta think about this for a minute 
Where are our shadows gonna be? Just kinda going with the flow, using our imagination. I want this to be very subtle and light as we get close to these highlighted parts of the mountains. And we'll get thicker as we go further down. A lot of trees down here. Again, this is just just something to get started, just so we can have a good idea when we add more color. And I think I'm just about there. There's going to be some darker, darker lines back here. Okay, let's start with that. I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to switch. This is the same same type of brush. I just have it worn down the middle, so we have more of a point on the end. A flat brush would work. Get some water on my brush. We need to get some more white. And let's grab some white and blue. Same cerulean blue. Carefully going along, trying to use our imagination. Now in between these blues, the reason why I'm being so careful with this is I want it right the first time is in the middle are going to be these open meadows, the valleys. That's going to be a different color. And so I'm trying to imagine where the tree is going to be around that. What is it going to look like? Okay, let's take a little bit more of that color blue. Let's add a couple of these tree lines way out back. Now you maybe begin to, to start to, to follow what I'm doing. The lighter blues become our meadows and these darker blues become strings of trees. And as we get closer to the viewer here, these metals are going to go from light blue to more of a brownish gray color. We're going to take a little bit of light blue, add a lot of a white to our, our mixture. Just kind of put some of that right in between these darker, darker blues. Wash my brush. And you know, I'm actually going to need just some, some CAD red. So I've got some CAD red here. I'm just going to get a little bit of that. That's going to help me create the color I want. So I'm going to take some CAD red, a little bit of quinacridone red. Can I get a good 
in between, get most of that off the brush, then pick up some white. That light pink, and then if we grab some black, maybe a little more white. So we're just basically adding a whole lot of gray to that mixture. Let's just start with this. A little bit darker than we want it to end up being, but that's okay. It's a good underpainting, and remember this is more or less like an underpainting. We might want to leave some of this darker color, and I always think it's good to start darker the first layer. switch back to our larger filbert brush and basically what we want to do is block in the rest of this painting just so we kind of know what's going on. I'm going to grab some sap green, a whole bunch of it, some white, some black, mix that all together. Got some water in there so it flows nice. motions with the brush and kind of sweep down, contacting the canvas when I'm coming down onto the canvas. Just make the indication of some trees. I might do the same over here. Now this side we're going to keep a more selective, a little sporadic with these pines. I'm going to wash my brush, and I'm going to grab some cadmium orange, mix it with my primer yellow. I'm going to grab some red, a little bit of Prussian blue. Our colorful trees are going to be right through here. Remember, I like to start darker. So we're just getting this blocked in with this color. Kind of a muddy orange color, very transparent. And we're going to have some over here in the shadows. And we might want a couple of these areas to be broken up a little bit. I like to get that established right now. Rather than focus on details, this is just the composition. We're working on the values, just where things are going to be. I'm not sure what's going to be out here, but I want something. So we'll leave that about like that. All right, I'm going to wash my brush. We're going to take some black, mix it with our white. We're going to pick up a little bit of that orange-yellow color. And 
that gray, now that we have that gray, got a little bit on the brush. a little bit over the top bottom of this color back here kind of glazing that over the top all right now we're gonna grab some more red and black and we need some shadows You'll notice this sketch underneath that we did, as I said before, it becomes very irrelevant to what we're doing. It was merely just something to guide us. So it's better to have an idea of what we're gonna do prior to trying to do it. So that a lot of that gets changed, it gets, gets kind of covered up. So it's just a rough guide. Right, I'm going to grab a little more of that same color and mix a little bit more down here and I'll finish it up about, I'll leave it about like that. I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to grab a little bit, a little bit of some more black, gray. We're going we're gonna to need to create some banks. For our stream here. disappear somewhere off somewhere off here and let's take a little bit of our blue mixture let's go this is that same blue we had maybe a little Prussian blue underneath but let's go underneath that bank just underneath the bank we want to take this blue We just got a little bit on the brush, not a lot. We're just looking for where are the banks. And then right underneath, we're adding this blue color. Because the places that aren't underneath the banks, I'm going to wash my brush here. We'll have some white and quinacridone red because that's the color above it. So that's going to reflect into the water. wash my brush and I'll take a small round brush and I'll just grab some solid white just to get us to see that a little bit better what I'm talking about so we add this white you can now just see that river a little more believable. All right, let's leave that for now. 
drive another one of my round blenders. We're just going to finish up taking some white and we'll grab some of this yellow orange. And then I'll grab some quinacridone and some black. A little texture. Get it in there. And right in the transition between these two areas. A little bit of that texture as well. And now we have kind of an underpainting. We're going to let it dry and then we'll come back to it. All right, so now in this next layer, now that this is dry, in this next layer, what we're going to be doing is basically setting the, the actual uh, contrast of the, the whole painting. So we're going to take a smaller round blender brush, and I'm going to grab some cerulean blue and get a little bit of quinacridone red and some white. start laying on just some darker shadows and at the base of these highlights this brush has got a little texture to it that it kind of automatically lays down just an older brush good for making textures So we just want a few of these textures right around this area. Then what we're going to do is pick up some more cerulean blue, blue and now some Prussian blue. And pick up a little bit of sap green. And some more Prussian blue. We want this to get a little bit darker, a little bit more green. Not too green though. And we need to find the color of these trees down below here. And that's close to about right. We'll keep going with this color. I'll just fill in all these blue areas. These darker blue areas with this color to kind of define these trees. Okay, so now that we got all these trees darkened, you can see kind of the idea of it now that these, these are clearly meadows, it's a lot lighter in color. So that starts to work for us. And what we can do now is refine that sky just a little bit more. And let's take some, some cerulean blue. This is solid cerulean blue. Let's add some water to it, sweep it across there. And I'm going to use my fingers and blend this out. You can use just about anything. I just like the control. Just get some blended into this area back here. Now, that's looking a lot better. I like that darker tone. And now let's grab some white. And some more quinacridone. Get a lighter pinkish. Using this larger filbert brush that we started with. Just dragging some clouds. Imagine that sun is hitting these clouds and illuminating them over the blue.
pick up some more white, a little bit of, little bit of that yellowish mixture that we had. Dragging in the idea of just playing with the clouds. Kind of manipulate them however you would like. Get some brighter yellows. Ooh, look how rich that is. We can cover some up later if we don't like it. Put some up top here. Kind of sweep some down at an angle. Right up through there. A little bit right here, a little bit right there. And right down below next to the mountain. Let's drag some through there and then right over those mountains way back there so we can push them back even further. All right, I'm gonna wash my brush. You can see how just that little bit of effort right there, I really like how that makes it appear like it's a lot further back, that that sunlight is diluting it. It's kind of what we're after. So I'm gonna grab this smaller round brush again. We're gonna let this whole area up here just kind of mellow out, let it dry a little bit. Let's pick up some yellow orange, grab some white. Yellow, orange, and white. I'm going to start dropping in these bright yellow fall color leaves, these aspen leaves. Just patting it on there. I think there's a lot of ways to do trees. Really depends on the painting. Depends if I had a good idea of what I wanted to do when I started the painting. If I'm not sure about what I want to do with certain areas, I might cover them with one color, a different color than we have now, and then end up turning them into these same trees. But because I might start with a different color underneath. Maybe I laid in a bunch of black. You know, I want these to be these bright yellow leaves. I'll go about it a little bit differently than we're doing it right now. So it can depend on the painting. This is a good example of knowing what we want when we start. You know where every color is gonna be for the most part. I can see I'm just going over These lighter areas, just tapping in. This is just starting to add highlights. I want to be sporadic with it through too, so you can see that I'm kind of going everywhere. Kind of put those in there, and then I'll grab, grab some water. I'll grab some red. Add that to our mixture. A little bit of Prussian blue. That's going to darken it. We're going to go over on this side we're going to add in some slightly brighter colors over here some reds of course we can grab those reds we might want I want a couple of these trees Maybe they're turning, maybe they're turning really red. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna mix in some red, maybe there, maybe we'll do it right here as well. And maybe we'll do some down low.
Very random. All right. Now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to grab this filbert brush. This is a number six filbert, a little bit smaller, quarter inch wide maybe. I'm going to grab some Prussian blue. I'll grab some yellow green, some black and white. I'm just making a, a dirty greenish color. However you get there, that's fine. This is just what I have left on the palette, so I'm just making a real dirty, rich, dirty green. I'm going to fill in these dark areas. They will be our pine trees. I'll do that all the way across. All right, now I'm gonna grab this larger round blender and we need to get some definition, especially through this area. So let's take some black, some white, and I'll grab some red with that. A little bit of that yellow gold. I'm going to start shading in some banks. And we want to have the color back here be a little darker. Right underneath all these pine trees, it's going to be a little darker back here. And some of that color is going to spread out onto this side of the creek. So got to think about these shadows being casted over these trees. And it's coming down through here. Just kind of break it up somewhere in here. I like using this round blender. It's just good to scrub this color in. allows you to slowly build it up, which helps me anyways get it right the first time, like I keep saying. And maybe some of the, the parts of these creeks, when it turns back, you can't really see it, so we're kind of making part of that disappear. And let's take a little more white. Add that to that mixture. Let's have our creek kind of come back over here. That creek can be however you would like it. might want to put I want to put another bend in the river let's do that let's take some white and black get some gray some red 
I get that color of that bank again. A little bit of yellow gold. Right there. I'm gonna put a curve in the bank. Wash my brush. Grab some white, a little bit of quinacridone. Of course, we can take some blue. This will be a darker blue. in those shadows and blend them out a little bit You know, the more I think about it, let's do, let's make a, that bend even more. Still not liking it so much. I kind of show you how we can make these adjustments. Let's make it go way back over here. And then that curve's gonna come down right here. Way over here and then get small. I'm gonna wash your brush. We're gonna take some black and red. Get that gray, get some white back in that mixture. And we'll have to lighten up that area, maybe a little bit. This is helping to cover real well. Now, now I like that bend in the river just a little bit more. It just makes the river more attractive. Really easy change. Very easy. You can take some white. Just get a lighter mixture. You can start adding. Adding these lighter colors back in here. That's kind of a long process, but eventually we get something we like. Sometimes it doesn't always go well. Now it looks like we've got a real good shadow casted on this side. I know you can see that a little bit better. I'm gonna wash my brush. And over on this side, I wanna grab the same darker. This is just that darker reddish color I had. It's gonna be some, gonna be some bushes coming down through here. Kind of oak brush, something here. That kind of fade down through here. Just a lighter gray here. Oh, that's nice and blended. So now we're to the point where we want to start really refining some of these details. We want to be thinking about all this stuff on a smaller scale. 
And that can be difficult. What do we do at this point? Well, the, the mountains are still a little bit flat. You can take this filbert brush here. Let's take some white and blue. I want to get a little more white than that. So it stands out behind it. We're going to shade this side of the mountain right here. We're going to start using this filbert brush and just making these tiny corrections. And the painting as a whole, it's looking pretty good. But if we want it to be very, very realistic, we've got to start adding all these little details. So I'm just trying to find that right shade of blue. that color and just kind of start pulling it down into here, readjusting some of these trees. Okay, now before I get too far into these trees, I want to just wrap up this sky and I'm going to take our round blender brush and some cerulean blue, kind of an in between, somewhere between these pinks. I just want to smooth out some of these areas a little more, make the colors a little bit richer. Okay, we're almost there, but. get things just cleaned up a little bit more. And I'm going to take some quinacridone and some white and get some pink. We want about that same color. Gonna be too bright. Need more white. Okay, so that's a little bit lighter. But I kind of like it. Got some highlights in here. And we're gonna take this all the way back. We're gonna add the idea of some clouds sweeping down, maybe a little bit lower, and catching some of that sunlight. darker. I'm going to add some shadows to some of these pink clouds just kind of around that general area. Yeah, it's just pretty subtle. 
and that we're getting close. So I'll switch back to our trees. And I'll stick with just uh, our quarter inch filbert brush here. I'm going to keep going with these mountains and it's going to get very tedious at this point. I'm going to stick to the mountains and the trees. I'm just adding little textures. And I'm just looking to clean up areas. Some areas just be more defined. And we take some white, a little bit of that quinacridone again. Pretty subtle. Just right on the edge of these highlights, between the highlights and the shadows, just getting some pink. Kind of blends these two together, makes that light seem like it's really intense out there. And then you can always add some more texture. We're gonna to want to take just some pure white. Just start. Breaking up some of these shadows, some of the edges of these shadows. And we can just keep playing with that. So I'll probably play with that a little bit more. That just kind of gives you an idea. Fairly simple. Wherever you think the light might be touching. And then we'll be going back to our Prussian Blue. This is where I'm going to spend most of the time. Prussian Blue and Cerulean Blue. I think I want some of these tree lines to be a little bit darker. I'm just going to just kind of pixelate the little ideas of little trees way out there. And I'll probably go over this whole area. Get a little more richer, a little more bluer, especially when we get down into this area. That, adding that little bit of Prussian blue kind of helps with that rich saturation we're trying to get. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to speed it up and then I'll slow it down when we get to these trees over here and down in here. Alright, so I'm fairly happy with the mountains at this point and let's work on the trees here and also here and really get these more defined and we'll start over here. We're going to take Prussian blue and we're going to take some of this yellow gold, mix the two together, kind of a sap green color. And we might grab I grab some black. I'm gonna have to get some black here. And we'll grab a little bit of that. Just mix it in there. Let's get some real dark shadows.
pretty thick paint right now, not a lot of water mixed. Let's really establish how dark some of these areas are going to be, even down right there and maybe right there. We want, might want this river to kind of real poke out a little bit more right there. And I'll add just some quinacridone to that mixture, so that's a little bit of red. I'm just going to start adding a little bit of texture. And all of this will be great texture. It kind of just sits underneath what we're going to put over the top. Alright, I'm going to wash my brush. And what I've decided over here is we want this to appear to be a little bit closer. Our bottom is right about there. I want to bring that down to maybe, maybe right here. I want that to appear that's about somewhere in the curve of this river here, right about there. So this stuff up here, we can get rid of. We can take cerulean blue, a little Prussian blue. Let's grab some more of that, that yellow. A little more pressure, cerulean blue, a little more cerulean blue in this mixture. And so we want that to be a little bit darker than that tree line that's right behind it. And we're going to cover this part of what we already have there with this dark green color, and it's going to turn into some pine trees that are a little bit further back. can detail the branches of these trees. I'd rather just block them in quickly like this and like I said sometimes you don't need to put so much detail on it and you don't realize that until later. And let's make let's make this yellow go away too right there. that up a little bit more later. No big deal. All right. Wash my brush and make sure our brush is dry. I'm just dabbing it off. I might switch brush. I'm going to switch to this little round blender. It's got kind of a point to it now. I've used it a lot. Let's grab some of that yellow gold. Let's put it over here. And we'll grab some white, add some white to that. Let's just start figuring out. We might have to wait for that darker green to dry behind there. I thought we can grab some black, some of that darker, darker color. Let's start thinking about underneath here. We're going to have some dark shadows. I said I want to get the shadows that are going to be way underneath and then we'll paint the leaves over the top of that. So, kind of have to envision what's going to be here. But it'll make sense as I get further.
All right, I'm gonna let all this black dry and then we'll get to work on some of the leaves. Okay, so now that this is dry, what I'm gonna do is work on building the leaves over the top and also the trunk. And we might wanna work on some of the trunk to start with. We'll just take some gray, mix some black and white together. And I'm gonna start just laying in some tree trunks. Just using this liner brush. need to get too particular that's about all we need to do for right now anyways now we can lay some leaves over the top so we'll take some of that yellow gold maybe some primary yellow I want that to be pretty bright We're going to start working on just building these colors up and we can go over to the other side and we can brighten up a couple of these reds just a little bit. But I covered this in a recent video, how to paint autumn trees, painting some autumn trees. And we're going to do the same exact process. So if you have questions, I'm going to speed this up because we're just going to tap at this with these oranges and yellows using the same process as that previous video. So if you have questions about this, check out the other video. This is all we're going to be doing. Pretty self-explanatory. Just adding little textures. And I might take a sponge, add some, some more textures. Right now I'm just blocking in this color. I just want these colors to be a little more prominent, a little more defined. When I add textures, I'll probably use my sponge. You can grab any old sponge like this one here. Just pick up some color. And just start tapping on texture. We could almost do what we're doing now. We'll just tap on that texture. And we'll go back to the liner brush. It's all about just creating a variety of different textures and just building it up to where it looks like a tree. So I'm going to speed it up and then I'll slow it down when we finish these trees and we'll work on wrapping up kind of the center and down through here.
Okay, so you can see with not much effort, these trees are looking a whole lot better. And I still might add a little more yellow. Some, sometimes I want it to really pop and you're gonna have to put down several layers to make that happen. This is just a couple so far, but for the most part, it's looking good. And same with over here, let's focus on the middle and then that'll just kind of give us a better idea of how everything is looking as a whole. So I'm gonna take this quarter inch filbert brush again and let's make sure that we have our creek looking good. I'm gonna take some white impression blue and I'm done using the cerulean blue because I want the cerulean blue to only be up here. So as we get further down, this impression blue is gonna give it kind of the effect of it being closer, just a darker, richer blue. I'm just gonna add couple spots. Again, we're just trying to keep this blue just beneath the banks. That's kind of the only place we want it to exist. did extend this part of the river down here, so I'm going to try to do that a little bit. And I'll put some over in here. I'm just being kind of creative with it. little bit lighter blue now just kind of blending that into the, the rest of the colors we have here in the water and of course I'm going to pick up a lot of white now and I'm going to get just a little bit of red That's that, kind of that same color, similar to up here. Teeny tiny bit up here. I want that river to appear really small through here. We want to try to fit those colors in though. And right through there. It's looking pretty good. I think for the most part, I'm pretty happy with that. And you know, we could, could take a little black, just mix it with our paints. A little water to keep that flowing. And what I'm doing, I'm trying to hide part of this river, make it seem like it's perhaps reflecting some of these trees, maybe just really shadowed. I'm 
take some more water and just keep that color going. I might do the same right down through here. What I might actually do is I, as I'm kind of moving through, start to look at why I'm happy with it, why I'm not. And what I'm kind of deciding right now is this color I'm laying down, kind of as the river comes underneath, it's reflecting things that are further up in the sky. And that might be a darker blue. So I'm kind of thinking about that. Maybe I want some darker blue down low in the water. Because when we're looking at the water here, and that's bouncing back up, that's gonna that's probably about right. We're reflecting somewhere up here. Maybe the mountains are reflecting right there. But as it gets closer, to make it appear closer, we're having to look down further at it. And so we're reflecting something that's much higher than what we have on canvas. Maybe that's a dark blue. It most likely is gonna be darker. Some really dark blue. This is just more Prussian blue, a little more black. make the bottom part even darker. All right, let's, let's leave it be for now. And we can start working on some of this grass. Now, what I like to do is take a liner brush and paint the whole thing. And I know that sounds crazy but I love having these textures. These tiny textures are what it, it's gonna make the grass look very real. So I'm gonna show you how I can do this a little bit faster than what you might think. I'm gonna take some white and we're gonna take some of that yellow gold Might take a little bit of black and red. So it's kind of a hint of pink in there, perhaps. I'm just kind of feeling out what color I have on here. Where, what's it going to look good? Where is it going to look good, I should say? And I might want a little more of the yellow and red. A little more vibrant, a little more saturated. There, that's probably the color. So what I'm gonna do, I have a lot of water and a lot of paint on this brush. Let's start with fading some of these highlights into the shadows. We're going to start pretty sloppy, pretty big, but we're holding the brush right on the back part, very far away, and so that allows us just to kind of move that brush, all kinds of just little sporadic moment, motions, and just kind of do that all over. And so we won't actually have to paint every blade of grass by just sporadically getting the brush to move. We're going to get these little textures and that's going to just going to give you the impression that it that it maybe is grass but we're just far enough away where you can't see all those individual blades little circle motions I'm contacting as I'm sweeping through the bottom of these motions not contacting when I'm coming up over the top, only when I go down. So I'm coming down and sweeping, down and sweeping, down and sweeping. 
them together and even a little bit as I'm going back up the other side. Together though, like start to create little blades of grass. And this is so painstaking, this is so tedious. But once you do it a couple times, you can understand what what it has to go through to get to that point of being very realistic. And it's a little easier. It's, it's hard to do this the first couple times because it does take so long. And what we're going to want to do is that was kind of a lighter mixture. Well, we could go a little bit lighter being that we have this color on our brush a little bit still. So I'm just going to add some brighter highlights. These are going to be kind of bushes, these darker areas, but I'm going to, I'm going to spot through them a couple times so it gives that impression of looking through. We're seeing a little bit of those highlights coming through that bush. It'll make sense when it's finished. We'll be able to see some of these highlights a little better. We'll go with some black and some red, some white. Test that out, see kind of where we are. That's about the color we have on there. If we take a little more black. A lot of more black. That starts to darken it to the tone that I'm looking for. And we're going to start. creating little textures and I want to use maybe some of the canvas to our advantage, the brush and just just keep making all kinds of little textures. So these would be the shadows of our, what's already in the shade I guess and maybe the banks are going to have some of those darker shadows. And maybe they trickle up in into the lighter areas just a little bit. Back down into here. Okay, now I'm going to go back to some of these lighter highlights. Got a little bit more red in this color. 
Start. Taking some of these highlights and just pushing them into some of that shadow, just a little bit. I've got a pretty old liner brush, so you can see I don't I don't stay too careful with it. I rub it pretty hard against the canvas. Yeah, maybe a little bit in some of this area. Just adding texture. And I can keep going with the same process and we can tighten that up even more so. I'm going to take some more black, red, and white. And maybe a little bit of a little bit of yellow. Get some water in my brush. This is slightly lighter. And just start breaking up some of these areas. Be a lot of small textures, and it just takes a while. I might go a little bit further with it. But for right now, I think you can understand the get the picture and what we can do, we still have to work on this area here, but what we can do with these trees real quick is take some white and then some yellow and a little bit of red. And we can take this lighter color, just kind of glaze some of that over the top. This top of these trees, that's going to start looking like sunlight. Just kind of penetrating some of these trees. more water in my brush. Really easy to do. See how that makes it look like it's really bright. I'm put a little bit on these trees over here just to lighten up. getting us pretty close. We might want to fine-tune a couple of these trees, but it'll be good for the most part. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this area down to our left. We'll take some red and some yellow going to have some red bushes and you know we can use our sponge here and we'll take 
I'll show you what I did with the trees a little bit. You can add this texture instantly. Love using sponges on landscapes. It's just such a great way. They can be shaped in so many different ways. It's a great way to get just some good fine details laid out fairly quickly. See how easy that is? There might be some way up high here in the woods. And I can even sweep some black through this sponge. Let's put some darker texture. Just a couple, we can sweep it a little bit. Turn it. Just another good example of how we can use these sponges. That's just some good texture that'll be underneath the detail. And then what we're going to do, take some of that darker color, start tapping underneath these bushes, get some dark shadows underneath. And I'll have to do that a little more. And then I'll also have to take some white and some yellow. We're going to get some real fine details up close here. And all we're doing is just taking a liner brush, some white and yellow, a little bit of red every once in a while. We're just making these strokes look like grass. We're going to keep doing that all over this area. We'll change the color. We'll have to go over some of these textures down through here. See that? Just little pieces of grass. Maybe you've fallen over this area. We could switch to a darker color. So you just got a little bit of red and yellow and some black with it. We could start. Adding some shadows. And I'm going to keep doing this. The same method. But it's going to be a little bit tedious. So I'm going to speed it up. And I think we'll have a completed painting.
All right, well, I think that wraps up our painting for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I know you saw me work on a lot of different areas towards the end there, and really all I did was take those same techniques that I went over and reapplied those to all these different areas throughout the painting, just smoothing out the sky a little more, glazing some different colors throughout this midsection, adding more detail down below, of course, but the process is the same. Remember, if you have questions, please leave them in the comments. I read them all and I'm happy to answer. This particular painting, I listened to you guys, I saw the comments, you wanted to see how I began a larger painting like this. And this painting is one I'm currently working on, a larger, much more detailed painting. And I know I broke this down into the cabin, I show you guys how I did the trees. But this painting kind of covers on how to start something like that. And if I were to work on it for probably a few more hours, maybe even days, I could get this painting to the level of detail that I have here. So I thought this was a great example. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember I auctioned off all the paintings here in the videos through my eBay and that link can be found in the description below. So if you'd like to support me, please check that out. Please check out my website and remember to subscribe to my channel. We have plenty of more awesome videos to come. Until next time, happy painting everybody.